Today we're here to answer an age-old question, which test is best, Ancestry DNA or 23andMe? Well first, you should decide if you even want to take a DNA test. Who should take the test? I'd say anyone interested in better understanding their origin or ancestry, anyone seeking to make a connection with that long lost cousin or fourth or fifth cousin that you never knew existed. There are also health reasons for taking these tests. Anyone who may want to know if they're susceptible to a certain medical condition and get early detection of diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's, etc. Also, anyone who's about to get married. And if you live in a small community and you want to make sure that you're not marrying your fourth or fifth cousin. So if you agree with any of those statements, then yeah, you should take the test. So now that we've answered the question of who should take the test, let's answer the question now of who should not take the test. If you're someone promiscuous, uh, if you've been sowing your seed all over God's green earth, if you've been a whore and you know it, don't take the test. If you've been a sperm donor and you don't want to discover that you're the missing puzzle piece to a few hundred kids, then maybe, just maybe, you should not take the test. If you're worried about discovering that someone in your family line was very promiscuous and now you find yourself related to more people than you ever thought conceivable, then maybe you shouldn't take the test. If racial purity is important to you, if you're someone who likes to think that your bloodline is 100% of a specific race, be it 100% of Mother Africa, 100% Wakandan, or 100% European, and you'd be deeply disappointed to discover that your DNA possesses components of multiple continents, then no, don't take the test. If you're someone who always thought that you were part Native American, and it would break your heart to discover that you're not, if it was always taught to you that you were part Cherokee, and if learning that you're not would hurt your feelings, then no, you should not take the test. Okay, now that we've gotten through all of that, let's take a look at two of the most popular DNA tests currently on the market, Ancestry DNA and 23andMe. Today, I'll be the guinea pig. Tomorrow, maybe it'll be you. For the sake of transparency, and since DYFME is an odyssey of self-discovery and self-understanding, let's begin. In a nutshell, both tests show that my DNA is literally a melting pot of ethnicities. Yes, my people loved and mixed. They mixed and loved, and I love them for that. According to Ancestry DNA, I'm 61% African with components coming primarily from the Western coast, as would be expected, and which typically aligns with the key slave trading regions of the continent. The 23andMe test results are quite similar at 59% African, but if you're someone who's into being pure, or 1% of Mother Africa, then you probably prefer the Ancestry DNA test results over the 23 test results. Again, I'm personally at peace with being mixed. I'm not upset that I'm not 100% of any one race, but I do have family members who are. Let's save that for another video. At the end of the day, in this world, and in this society, I am an African American, and I love every aspect of being of African descent. I claim it. If I only had one drop of black blood in me, I'd still be considered African American. And it wouldn't matter if it was 0.001% black, I'd still be black. However, let me also say that it's my belief that there is genetic strength in having DNA that merges together from different corners of the world. The opposite of having genetic diversity would be inbreeding. Science proves that inbreeding can lead to a host of birth defects and other disorders. So the opposite of inbreeding would be to mate with someone from another side of the world, not boots with someone from a far-flung corner of the globe, someone who you are least likely to be related to. And according to science, inbreeding leads to the decreased biological fitness of a population. It's easy to understand then why there are laws on the books regarding incest. It is to prevent inbreeding. But to be fair, another reason people of African descent don't like to see impure less than 1% results is that it implies that at some point in that family's bloodline, slave rape may have occurred. As that Malcolm X famously described in his autobiography, he attributed his light skin complexion to his grandmother being raped by a white man. One reason that I would look differently at my own European component is the fact that my paternal grandmother, who was considered Caucasian, she chose to marry a black man of her own free will in Georgia at a time when it was illegal for them to do so. Miscegenation laws were enacted to prevent the mixing of races. They broke the law and she paid the price by spending most of her life in the back alleys of Augusta, Georgia in the name of love. Like the saying goes though, once you go black, you never go back. They loved and mixed, they mixed and loved. And for that reason, I'm here with you today. Grandma could have chosen another path. She could have lived a comfortable life. She had siblings and cousins who remained on the white side of the fence. So I applaud her for her bravery. I applaud my grandmother and grandfather for what they did by being together, by choice. I applaud them for breaking the law. With that said, Ancestry DNA shows that I'm 25% European. What's interesting about the European component is that the results show that I'm more British than Irish. And my family always thought that we were more Irish than British. We always thought the reverse. So it makes sense to me now though, the reason why I prefer British gin over Irish beers. I'll take 
some London Dry Gin any day over a Guinness. Let me also say that the 23andMe results tended to be a bit confusing in their European breakdown. One component shows British Irish, while another shows Northern European, so there's a conflict between Ancestry DNA and 23andMe. The Ancestry DNA results for the European mix were much easier to interpret, and that may be because Ancestry DNA has a larger database of test results than 23andMe. Lastly, let me say that both test results were close in analyzing my Asian breakdown or my Asian component. Ancestry DNA says that I'm 0.5% Pacific Islander, to which I respond, yes, baby, yes. Can't you see the Asian? Can't you just see it in my eyes? I'll take that 0.5% and hereby proclaim the Hawaiian Islands as my ancestral home. The beaches of Maui and Oahu are my birthright. I fully embrace my 0.5% Samoan. I claim the Rock and Bruno Mars as my cousins. Also, I have a greater claim to saying that I'm more Hawaiian than President Obama. So, I don't want to hear any bullshit about why I keep going back home to Hawaii from anybody. You can keep that shit to yourself. Funny enough though, 23andMe said that I have a slight Native American Indian component, whereas Ancestry DNA said that I have 0% Native American DNA. And that was a real bummer after being told all my life that I was part Cherokee. So those are my origins according to Ancestry DNA and 23andMe. The results are very similar between the tests, but what separates the two? Here are the key differences as I stand here today. If you want to make a connection with long lost family members, then Ancestry DNA definitely has a larger database than 23andMe. Ancestry DNA also has Ancestry.com, which is an add-on that puts a lot of historical artifacts in front of your face, census forms, ancient photos, etc. If you're looking for those connections, then go with Ancestry DNA. However, if you're more interested in getting an intimate look at your genes and you have curiosities about what you may be susceptible to, certain diseases and conditions, then go with 23andMe. 23andMe is constantly studying how your DNA can predict what you may encounter in the future. They even analyze your DNA to determine if you're lactose intolerant. But please note, these health tests do come at an extra expense relative to their standard kit. In my case, I knew that Alzheimer's and dementia runs in my family, so I was curious to see what 23andMe would say about my likelihood for getting either of those diseases. The good news is that the results came back negative. So so if at some point in the future, if you hear about me succumbing to Alzheimer's, you can call bullshit on 23andMe. Please do that, okay? Because I won't remember. Final verdict. If I had to choose only one, I'd go with Ancestry DNA. The revelations have been very, very interesting. And Lord willing, I'll have more to say about those connections in a future video. I'd say if you have the resources, you should probably try them both out. Let us know if you take the test or took the test. Tell us in the comments. We may invite you for a future interview. If you've not taken the test, please check the description below for the links to all of the kits or visit the store at dyfme.com. Each time that you order a kit through dyfme.com, you'll support this channel. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this channel. Click the bell for notifications and updates on when we drop other videos. Until then, I'm Ben for dyfme.com. Do you feel me? This is dyfme.com.